NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all of your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. Looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. The SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to explore the full curriculum and latest training offerings. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly Stories for this week. Again, please leave us a voicemail message. My Google Voice inbox, voicemail box, rather, is empty. Zero? It's what? empty. I'm kind of feeling sad right now, dude. It's empty. You know what? I think maybe that means that we're just not relevant anymore. Maybe not. Maybe, Ten years. Maybe it's it. time to fucking hang this shit up. What, is, what are we gonna do with the studio? <laughs> porn Burn studio. It. <laughs> Everyone already thinks it's a porn <clears throat> studio, so let's make it true. <clears throat> I hear there's money in porn. Although I don't know, porn is free on the internet now. I think they're struggling. No, because all those sites you go to have advertisers, yeah. unless you download it from like BitTorrent or Net News Feeds or. Wait, I mean, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, moving right along, we now see why Larry needs his own 55 gallon <laughs> drum lube. It's hard to travel. It's with, trending though. on it's trending on Twitter right now. Is uh, it PSW lube <laughs> is trending on Twitter? I think that's what I called that's it. Awesome lube drum. That's what it was. <laughs> PSW lube drum. I'm trying to get the trending on Twitter. Be awesome. Mr. Carlos Perez is here with us on the lines via Skype. Welcome, Carlos. Hey, Mr. Michael Santarcangelo is with us. Welcome, Mike. Sir. What's going on? It's a good day at the beach. That's good. Like every day. I'm glad, I'm a glad good, to hear A bad that. day at the beach is better than a good day at work. Yeah, I mean, you guys wearing parkas now? Did you have to sh- shovel snow yet? No. When does that start? No, I got the air conditioning on, dude. <laughs> yeah, shorts and t-shirts still. It's 40 degrees at the bus stop in the morning. Shorts and t-shirts still. Yeah. Did you see the video about this dude's like when it's 47 degrees in March, we're like taking our clothes off, driving with no shirt on. Yeah. When it's 47 degrees in October, we're like, oh my God, it's freezing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's true. It's true. You can leave us a voicemail message about the weather. I, tell me about your day. I don't know. 475 441 4225. That's 475 441 hack. Okay. Because that's not what we are, it's what we do. <laughs> It's what we do, not what we are. It's what a lot of other people do. Uh, I read a great article about terminal escape sequences. Mm-hmm. My story number 16. Yeah, I wanted to actually talk to you about that. I wanted to, So yeah. when you cat a, a shell script, it, it honors escape sequences. Yeah. So basically you can hide things inside of the shell script. Yeah. So he described some other methods for looking at files before you run them to make sure there's nothing nefarious in there, which is kind of an esoteric type attack, but I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Less is more. Always remember that. Yes, because less will actually see the... I believe in his example, he says that less will see those uh, escape characters and know how to handle them properly so that it actually tells you. Yeah, the old saying, less is more, is true. Yes. Less will show you escape sequences by default. That's that's a damn good idea. (laughs) Probably just alias. More to less to more. More to less. More whatever. To less, more, less. More to less. Alias more to less. That's really confusing. Your brain hurts for it. I can see the look on your face. You're like, oh, I need another drink, Paul. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Maybe you should go get some lube from the drum. I need to get need another glass of lube. <laughs> my skin's feeling kind of dry, actually. I could probably yeah. use some of my. <laughs> but my your inter- your intestinal tract, <laughs> it's moist. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> you guys are missing out on all the fun not being here in the studio. Uh, you could nestle are, in. Are it. We, we Kevin, we could soak you right in that 55 gallon drum of lube. 
man, that just sounds like a, a whole whole bunch of fun. It kind of sounds like the nightmares I had in yeah, anyway. Um so stage, you want to talk a- anyone are you guys uh, alive out there? Yes. Hello. Hello, Mike, Carlos, you guys doing okay? We're yep. here, man. Okay, good. Did you guys hear about Stage Fright 2.0? Did we? Did you ever? <laughs> I actually have so heard about this one. Stage Fright book? Yeah, the second one. Uh, J Duck is. Uh, fucking animal. Was it J Duck? They found both of them? They found the first one, I know that. And he's quoted here, I was talking about the second one. Apparently, it yep. involves two different vulnerabilities uh, that need to be present on Android. Uh, in order to uh, basically accomplish the same thing. The difference being, before you could do it through MMS, now it's largely uh, a browser-based attack. Is, it, is that the way that you read it, Carlos? Did you read about this one? Um, I haven't read about version number two. I know that version number one was um, six different CVEs, so that's a heck of a... Uh, and that they messed up the first patch. They had to reach a second one. Oh. So... Damn, a third, a third time. Yeah. yeah, so it needs. There's a vulnerability in libutils, which has a CVE number 2015-6602. There's yeah. a second vulnerability which doesn't yet have a CVE number. The second bug triggers the first one. Right, and the second one is in lib stage right. Yes, five or later. Right. Yeah. So eight CVEs in total for this uh, exploit. Yep. Hmm. And what I find interesting is many times when I talk with customers and I'm going like, yeah, you have a couple of mediums. No, 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 no. I only care about the high ones. Well, you know that attackers are chaining attacks and exploits, and but probably just something simple can kind of snowballs into something bigger. Yep. This could be a very good example of that. This is snowballing. Yeah, and that that is uh, you know very much the the. Um, the the plug post and I forget who did it uh, a couple years ago and it was from low to pwned. Sorry, I have stains in my shirt. <laughs> I'm a hot and mess. You gotta, you gotta cut back on the lube, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was the it was what like the that? the whole low to own type of thing, like taking those low vulnerabilities and then <clears throat> turning that into total total pwnage. So Trey, Trey Ford has some advice for us. He says. He advises his friends and family to buy handsets that allow for updates directly from the manufacturer. Yep. So Nexus only. Yep. Yeah, so you know, directly from Google or, or nothing. <coughs> Agree. The problem with that is they're kind of expensive, no? Or can you get those uh, no, through your the, can you get those through your carrier? <coughs> some of them you actually can. I think they have deals with some of the carriers. Mm-hmm. But right now all carriers are kind of uh, eliminating the subsidizing, so Pretty soon, if you want the next iPhone, you have to pay full price or take one of those plans where they tie you in for $35 a month. Yep, financing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, hooray AT&T. Oh, so you no, no longer get the phone fact, discounted a- just with a contract? Nope. In, in fact, AT&T is the last one to still have it. Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile were the first. AT&T is the only holdout, and they're, I think they're planning on doing it uh, at the end of this year. It's already done. You cannot, really you cannot get a not new iPhone 6 or 6S without doing the the sub... Um, no, I'm sorry. You can. Um, if you lease it. No, you have to buy the phone outright, and you're essentially buying it unlocked, and it's $850 for a 16-gig iPhone 6S. <laughs> That's the only way to get an iPhone? Unless you, unless you finance it. On a month to month Can basis. you do the uh, next plan where you kind of lease that's the, the next, phone? That's the next plan. Okay. And it's not lease. It's finance. You own at the end of it at two years. Oh, well, I'm doing the lease right now on my current phone. Where I don't own it at the end of it, I give it back after a year and a half and get a new phone. Gotcha. Yeah, so no, I just lease it from them. Right. So I'm doing the own at the end of it, and it's still the same way. I that's, gotcha. that's the next plan. There's another one that's non-leased. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You have the yeah. leased one. I have the non-leased yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope they still do the <laughs> – I like leasing. I just pay full price. <laughs> Carlos, you like to do smart. that? Buy it, buy it outright, and own it. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's it's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. It doesn't cost you more because of credit. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then again, I, I, the success came out. I'm going like, okay, cool. Uh, will it offer anything that will save me minutes of my workflow during the day? Nope. Okay, then I'm happy with what I have. Mm-hmm. I'm very frugal when it comes to equipment. My MacBook right now, it's. 
going to uh, over three years now, and I'm not planning on changing it anytime soon. I have friends and coworkers that change their gear every freaking year. They get the new MacBook yeah. every year. They get the new whatever Apple puts out. Or I even have other friends that get every year a new Surface or whatever Microsoft dishes out. I hear you, Carlos. My uh, the MacBook sitting here on my lap is an early 2011 MacBook Pro, 13 inch. <clears throat> I'm, I'm usually every two, two to three and, year, two years, and this years. thing is still cranking along like a badass. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah well, let me ask. Let me ask your. Go ahead, Mike. I know you're trying. You're trying to chime in there. Go, ahead, go for it. I just wanted to ask your opinion. I mean, like, I I never want to take on the dreamy Trey Ford and his absolutely perfect hair, <laughs> but you definitely couldn't. Fair enough. You don't have uh, enough hair, Mike. That's what we're saying. I, well, not on my head. You guys want to check out my back. <laughs> no. Uh, you just comb that the, shit but, forward. But we, but we talked about, right, so I give people advice, um, buy directly from Google, don't don't deal with carrier delays, all that other types of stuff. That's interesting advice. I, I guess the question I have when I look at that is to say, what's the – we like to, from our industry, say, that's a problem. They're not patching fast enough. These are huge problems. There's a lot at risk. Do we have examples where people have actually been taken down by this? And and what's that average cost of buying something that goes through the cycle as those Android users experience it relative to paying the additional costs or or buying direct or limiting your choices and options into it? Like, I guess my question is, is this actually good advice and, and, and does a mass movement like this start to change it or... Are we tilting at windmills again, saying, "Yep, yeah, this is all bad. Trust us." Where's the evidence that it's bad? And I look, I, I'm not smart enough to know. So it's 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 truly just me looking at this, going, "Yeah, I mean, that sounds nice, except for, is it right?" So my question, to you guys, the smart well, I, people. I think it depends on your security level, right? right and your right. tolerance, yeah. like what's your what's your <clears throat> risk level on your phones if you're an organization or a corporation. Like, what's your tolerance for risk on smartphones, right? Maybe right. you're supplementing that with some type of mobile iron air watch good or yeah, whatever some mdm or something yeah some yeah. other kind of mdm yeah. and it's a great point it's enterprise versus risk. individual mm -hmm. hey yeah. i i lose my phone or you know i can disable apps remotely so if there's some problem i can i can have well, some it, mitigation it will, also, it will also depend if you uh, on your risk matrix would you be somebody who would be targeted by uh mm -hmm. somebody who would have the resources to do it for example, I have seen in several catalogs out there uh, exploits for the Nexus 5 for stage fright. People selling it and mm -hmm. people buying it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, those who buy out of those catalogs that I've seen are people who are willing to ditch uh, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for that exploit. What do they use it for? Uh, I don't know, but they're there for sale and people buy them. Do yep. we have stories of people that have had their devices affected by stage fright that then went on to suffer some harm? I had my iPhone hack once, but really? not not for okay. safe not safe fright. Uh, yeah, I, I remember one time I was a bit vocal about several <laughs> activist groups out there in the <laughs> podcast, and somebody decided to use um, uh, a WebKit vulnerability that was in the Twitter client. They sent me a DM. I saw the DM, I clicked on the DM itself, uh, the Twitter client crashed, and then I went to the gun range after the gym, I was at the gun range and I wanted to take a picture of my target. I bring up the camera and I look at the uh, corner and I saw, well, what's that picture that I have here in my photo roll? And when I look at it, it was a guy with a Guy Fox Max with a camera taking a picture of whoever was taking his picture, kind of like a message. I was going like, I never took this picture. I don't know from where this picture came from. I look at the timestamp, and the timestamp was around the time I was at the gym in the treadmill where my phone crashed. And then I started checking around, and yeah, it was a, um, a WebKit vulnerability that only allowed access to what the Twitter app had access. So in my case, was contacts and photos. Hmm. Huh. I like how you worked in. I was at the gun range and at the gym. So basically, what you're saying is, I work out, bro, and I shoot. Come at me. Bring it. That's, that's, I like how you, it was very subtle. But that it was. was that's nice. Jeez, and you had to break all that subtlety. Jesus. Right. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure I got it right. 
Yep, you I got it. I right. still have that picture somewhere in my camera roll. <clears throat> So, so Michael, I wouldn't necessarily. Uh, I I uh, I don't profess to know of folks that have been sort of compromised by something like that, but sort of knowing what the patch history through some of the providers is for some of these updates. Um, oh, it's maddening. I, I uh, oh, I've yeah. been on, but for for, for Android stuff, uh, you in fact may have a phone that's two years old that you will never see an update for, even though the phone supports it. It's just that the carrier doesn't want to have to support it. Yeah, and I just my point is we always look at that and say, yeah, carriers should do this. And and based on everything we've been doing for the last 20 years, I go, yeah, it totally makes sense. Uh, just what, what looks around and goes, the, um, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. That somebody put QR codes uh, and paste, uh, and put them around the walls and there was a vulnerability against Samsung phones and people started kind of using their phones to scan the QR codes mm -hmm. and uh, people were getting their phones either – Erased or uh, or crashing. I remember Oops. that happened in one of the Derby cons. Uh, while while the conference itself, there was a vulnerability for Samsung uh, phones, and it could be exploited via a QR code. They started printing those out and putting them around the conference floor, and people were scanning the QR codes and uh, having problems with their phones. Whoops. Which I find fascinating. So you're at a security conference. You're <laughs> you're putting in a, a technology that most people say is already dead. And security people are deciding to scan it. That's absolutely fascinating to me. Oh, you'd be surprised what people at security cons do. Every time I teach a class, I get to see all of the traffic of what the students are doing during class. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn. Really, dude. Oh, well, have without you, HTTPS. Have you seen Damn. anybody scan a, a, a bar pass, a boarding pass barcode yet? Oh, I saw that this week. That was cool. There's like stuff it, on there. Now, the article says that uh, from the boarding pass, and Larry, I don't know if you've looked into this because you've looked into things like SIM cards too. It, it all kind of goes along with like technology or um, something that's holding your tech, your information that you're going to throw away, right? Like a SIM card yep. or boarding pass yep. to me kind of falls into that same class of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. things, so to speak. Not like Internet of Things, though. We'll talk about right. that. It's a totally different story. But on the boarding <coughs> boarding pass, there's a barcode, and they contain information. Now, from the article, they said they could use some of this information to figure out not just which flight you're on, but get your traveling, you know, the number associated with your account, yep. figure out where your you're frequent, going. Like your frequent flyer frequent number. Frequent flyer number, thank you. Figure out where you're going. They even modify your upcoming travel. All from just that one, <coughs> one number. It seems kind of scary. <coughs> that was for like uh, I don't remember what airline it was. Luthsani, Luth. What's the Lufthansa? Luth, Luth something. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, it's Lufthansa Star Alliance. Luth, Luthan. What is it? Lufthansa. Lufthansa. Yep. Is that just fly to Lithuania or? It's German. It's an international travel. Okay. Gotcha. Is that a German airline? That's also so also affected United yeah. as well. But so you don't need yeah, a password and got to a log in. Yeah, picture of a Delta boarding pass, so I'm, I I wouldn't be shocked if Delta's impacted. Uh, <laughs> so the picture, the first one there is Delta, and they said it does not include your frequent flyer number. Gotcha. An older one, anyways. Oh well, thank goodness for that. I want anybody racking up extra points for me. I know. <laughs> That'd be funny. Or cashing them in. Don't. This feels like – this to me feels like a great example. So tell me what you guys think of this. I, I, I think it's one of those things where you look at it and my my first instinct is – actually, I wasn't shocked, right? So I wasn't like, oh, my good. I was like, yeah, that's not terribly surprising to me. I saw somebody comment on Twitter and they said, well, who who prints these out anyway? Uh, try flying out of Myrtle Beach. For the most part, um, you're, you're printing them. Um, I just started – I switched airlines, and actually now I can start doing more mobile in most places. And they all have mobile apps, and they're, they're m much easier, I think, as a traveling perspective. But we talk a lot of times in security when we say we need stories to help people understand this. And I think this is one of those great stories where you can say, well, what would happen if? And it feels like somewhere along the line somebody didn't say – what if somebody just takes their boarding pass and throws it away and somebody else picks it up? What could they do with it? Mm. They had a problem that they were trying to solve, which was 
I want to, at the moment I scan this, I want to have all the information about this person possible. And you know what? It would be faster if we just put it in a barcode rather than how to do a lookup. So let's do it that way. And everybody went, oh, yeah, it's great because that's, that's a better customer service. So, of course, you're going to do it that way. Well, until somebody, you know, and, and if the security person somebody said, that's stupid, you can't do that, blah, 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 they'd be like, oh, stop, you don't understand. <laughs> if we flip it around, though, and say, well, what would happen if? And if somebody goes, well, the people don't throw them away, go, okay, there's 10 flights coming in right now. Let's go watch the 10 flights land and see what, how many people throw them away. And then say, hey, let's go fish a couple out and see what we can see on them. Boom, there's a good story. So to me, this feels like a story uh, set up. For, so if you're in the enterprise and you're not in the airline industry and somebody goes, well, I don't know who would ever do it that way. I, I don't know why that would happen. Go ahead and well, say, yeah. Well, do you think the people with the boarding codes should have asked themselves the same question? <laughs> I, I just, that's kind of the way I see this. Like, this is one of those, if you're traveling, yeah, shred it. Don't throw it away. Use yeah. mobile if you can. Delete it, right? Com it feels like common sense, but I guess it's not. I, I mean, I, I think, I think the, ultimately the answer is why would anybody ever do that is not the right question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it, what it suggests is that nobody anticipated it. So now what a great opportunity to come back and say, and then when somebody goes, well, they wouldn't do that, say, yeah, well, we'd hope that, right? But what if they did? What would they learn? What would happen? How would this impact us as a company? And, and we don't have to have those answers. You know, we always in security feel like we, I've got to have the answer. I need to tell them what they needed to do. I don't think that's the case here. It'd be much easier just to say, but what if? And then, and then run with it. And then this is – so to me, this is one of those things I file away as an example I can pull out later and show to somebody and say, yeah, but there's examples where this happens. Let's, let's go have a conversation. But now, yeah. Southwest collects your boarding pass. Yep. Unless you have a mobile device. Unless they, you have a mobile device. You they don't your take phone. your phone. Right, yeah. right. But it's up to you to delete the picture from your phone right. when you're done. <clears throat> but, I mean, if someone's going to break into your phone, like Caller's example, yep. I mean, having access to your boarding pass is the least of your concerns, I would think. If someone's in your phone, they, which is, is at least my risk assessment of it. So I, so basically, I like. Now we all got to have pictures of us working out at the gym and at the gun range to just let people know if they break into right. our phone. But they They're screwed. Expect. They're screwed. It'd be like that movie, movie Taken. I will find you and I will kill you. I have you. a particular set of skills. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at boarding passes. <laughs> hey. That's right. <laughs> oh, Don't knock boy. it till you try it. I used up my one good segue. I'm sorry. I got nothing else for you. That was, no, that was, that was great, Mike. We're a little, um, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of good, real good no, stuff. There wasn't, well, I'm not really fired up. About, I mean, there's a threatening post. A, threatening to post a sex tape on Facebook isn't a crime. This really isn't computer security related. Uh, it's really more about a creepy landlord and a <laughs> piece of, guy's a piece of crap. Uh, he puts dead cats in his tenant's mailboxes and got in trouble for... Uh, Cruelty to animals. Good. And he cut off their electricity, which is also a big no-no if you're a landlord. Uh-huh. Um, but he also threatened to release a sex tape claiming that one of his tenants was involved in. And that was found not to be a punishable or a, a prosecutable crime. They didn't prosecute him for that. Threatening to publish the sex tape. Was it not a crime. Apparently, didn't exist. Right. Apparently, Actually, there was no sex. So, so, threatening to publish it was not a crime. Correct. I would argue that that might. It depends. That might be extortion. This is where I said I was going to put my lawyer hat okay. on. Uh, it sounds right? like extortion to me. In this particular case, and there's some more details. Wouldn't it be like a lawyer wig? When you have like a wig, it, 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 it could be. Powder, it, you powder. know what? It could be a whole lawyer outfit that is very well coordinated together, Mike. Okay. All right, I like it. <laughs> Okay, that was that, really bad. And you see Mike brought up the wig part. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's going to be Halloween time soon, and Larry and I are going to do the show in drag. We're just... Is that... That's not the plan? Yeah, yeah, it's the, just, plan. it's the oh, plan. It's the plan. Okay. It's the plan. That's it's, the plan now. It's the plan. I'll be at Disney. <laughs> 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 not in drag. In drag? <laughs> You'll be at Disney in I drag? Will. No. Oh. I'll be at Disney, not in drag. Okay. In drag. Whatever. Um, so, what, what, how did we get from dressing up as a woman to... <coughs> I, we, thanks for... I don't know. Speaking about dressing up as a woman, did you see that you can uh, root the Google on Hub now? Yes. <laughs> how was that a segue? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> grasping for straws. Nothing just, really segues together. I'm, I'm, gra I'm grasping for straws, just like good <laughs> stories this week. There you go. 
<laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, no, that would be grasping for straw, not grasping for straws. I guess. Well, don't let our straws touch. That's... It's a, no, no. it's a no no. Don't Look, cross I, the street. I, I failed to update my stuff, but let me. Can I ask you guys an opinion on on a story that did break o yeah. over the last couple of days? Yeah. Only. Um, I might, only I might if I can say something smart about it. If not, then you'll have to. I think to. you guys will say something smart about it. Is it was it mm. Patreon? Is on this show, I don't know. Patreon, oh, yes, reach? Got hacked, Patreon, yeah. is that how you say it? Yep. So yeah. look, the way I the way I saw it, and so I'm I'm kind of curious now your take on it, was uh, they discovered a problem fairly quickly. They came out, they're very transparent about it. They laid out all sorts of details on it, uh -huh. and said, "Hey, we we screwed up. We're sorry. Here's what happened. Here's what we did. Here's what we did to to try to protect against it. Here's what we're gonna do now." I looked at that. Frankly, I went, "Well, that's awesome. Good job." I'm reading a lot of stories that talk about how horrible they were, what a bad company, this is just another in a long line of breaches, we're all screwed. What did I miss? I, I think what uh, people are complaining about, one, they were using uh, production data in their development environment, so they, so they were taking actual accounts and information and password hatches from uh, the production server and moving them to a web-accessible not secure, not monitored dev development server. Dev yeah, server everyone does that connected to the internet, and no. not only that, but one they, they want like, no. oh, don't worry, they're BC, B crypt encrypted. You don't have to worry about this, uh, any impact on your password. So I'm going like, well, same thing. The Ashley Madison guy said, yeah, I, that's a fair point. I, I accept that. But they also came out too, and I talked about how they were salting it, how they salted each one individually, how they were actually like. I I, I felt like they came forth with a lot of details. By the way, I, I kind of felt the same way in terms of you're using production data on a server box. But you know, kind of like Paul said, you know, okay, but they're not they're not the first company that did it. I felt like they detected it fairly quickly, and and to be fair, I I mean to me that was the one ding I had. I was, but but they also were using it encrypted. So I mean, like I look at it, and people are like, well. I mean, you know, you could get my email address, and that's really bad. What? I, I want to say it was more than email bits. address, but I, I could no, I know that was something else completely. That was the Experian T-Mobile mm -hmm. one. I yeah, was about to bring that up. It, you look at a, a compare and contrast between between the Patreon and Experian, and that's you got to give Patreon a lot of credit for at least coming out and saying this is what we did, and this is how we're trying to solve it versus the fact sheet that T-Mobile and Experian put out, which says, hey, you're you're kind of screwed, but we'll give you free credit monitoring for a year. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 from hey, from the credit the monitoring that agency that got popped. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're talking social security numbers got lost. That's... Yeah, and, and also we, we have to kind of change a bit the mindset in the industry where you're going to get... We're preaching to blue teams, assume a compromise... Go hunt 40 bad guys in your network. Yeah. Um, well, we have to assume the same thing when we go out there. Hey, we're being transparent. We got owned. This is what we're doing. Cool. Good on you. Let's not punish everybody that gets owned and shame them to death. Like, oh, you got owned. You're so bad. Hey, at least uh, shame them if they're not taking remedial action, if they're no, not open and clear. And if they don't show that they have been able to track what actually happened in their environment. Carlos, yeah, is that – wait, right? hold on, Carlos. Hold on, Carlos. Is that yeah. your new, like, talk show or, like, website, You Got Owned? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Love you, Carlos. Oh, <laughs> No, I mean, it's just, uh, that's that's the thing, right? They didn't come out, it wasn't sophisticated, it wasn't complex, it wasn't unprecedented, it wasn't, they were like, look, this is what we, they didn't even hide it. We had production level data on a development server, it turns out somebody from the internet could get to the development server, and this are, these are the things that they did. No, yeah, uh, I, I have to apologize, they, they, they were open, they showed all of the users, this is your risks, this is how they're mitigated. This is how we found out about this. Yes, we detected the attack. We're monitoring. We're making, we're making sure uh, that we're going through an entire process and we're being transparent around it. I would applaud them. Yeah, it, you, it, it was bad, but let's applaud their, their good action. Now, if you have another company that just stays quiet, then gets leaked out in the media, there's been months and they still haven't figured out how they got pwned. Um, then that's the one we should actually punish. Yeah, well, plus two. I mean, you know, to me, first bite at the apple, Patreon did well. 
they they keep getting popped or they have another problem, then I then I think the, <clears throat> the calculus on it changes. But you, you said something that, that's kind of great. Um, I actually wrote a piece this week where I talked about the need to anticipate breach. What's interesting is I've come off the position that we need to assume breach, and, and it's a really simple reason. Uh, when you tell me that there's a continuous breach or that we're assuming breaches, by the way, I think it's great to tell blue team that and to go hunting. I, that, that I'm good with. But from a leadership perspective, I like the word anticipate a lot better because it allows us to ask the what if questions that we just laid out. What if? What if? What would we need to do? What what should we anticipate? What would we look for? What would the impact be? What would our reaction need to be? If you assume, you feel defeated before you even get out of the gate. Not if you're a hunter. I get that. But from a leadership position, um, what I'm advocating to people is is to assume uh, to assume is good, but to anticipate is better. Oh, Mike, I no. thought of you the other day. My my son asked me. I told him because it's a second year of basketball, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, you got to be a leader. And then he asked me like a ridiculously hard question. He's <laughs> you like, broke it down into like fundamentals and competencies. I, I did. And He's like, Daddy, what's a leader? I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I walked right into that one. As long as <laughs> right? you didn't say someone who has followers, son. No, oh. I did not. I did not say that. But that's a hard question to answer to a seven-year-old especially, right? That's a hard question to answer. Hard yeah. I'm like, hold on, son. Let me call Mike. <laughs> I got him on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I got, I get the, I get the hard question the other, the, the other day, which was completely unrelated. Where did babies not, come from? No, no I'm not, I'm not gonna get the, get into that. What this one was, but it was, Daddy, why did you have to go with Grandma to the lawyer? Ooh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll kids tell you about perce- that when you're older. <laughs> yeah, kids are perceptive. Yeah, adult, man. adult stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. How old do I have to be? 27. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do you guys feel about um, viruses that, uh, or malware, I guess I should say, that infect a system but do what they think is good things and uh, like apply patches and fix vulnerabilities? Oh, we've seen this before. We've seen this. Is, oh, yeah. This is not the first time we've seen this. No. It, it, it reminds me of a, a boss I had or have who actually wrote a letter defending somebody who did that. Interesting. Hmm. Well, re- remember Max Moser? Yeah, yeah, that's the example that I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's that, that's the one I'm I'm also thinking of. Yeah, it's good. Um, now, what happens when that patch breaks something? Yep. Yeah, I, well, the, with the Max Moser example, there's more to that story sure. oh, yeah. than meets the eye. And that app actually happened to be, if I remember, if memory serves me correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, fellow hosts and listeners, that was the bind T-SIG vulnerability. I believe you're right. Um, yep. Which was really bad and super easy to exploit. And he wrote the, shit, lion worm? Does that sound right? Maybe uh, going out on a limb here. I think it was the lion worm, but did did exactly what this is exactly what I thought of. I should have. Is it Max Moser? Lion, lion, I want to say it was the lion worm. I wrote a paper that referenced it. Yeah, Max. Oh, Max Vision is the one I'm thinking of. Max, Max Vision. Yeah, yeah, Max Vision. Max Moser was the guy who did uh, yeah. the original backtrack. Correct. Yeah, Max Vision. He did the lion worm, correct? Yeah. I was right. Wow. I remember reading the book Kingpin where he gets mentioned. Yeah, but there was a lot more that happened with Max Vision beyond that story. But essentially, oh, yeah. yeah, that was the the premise of it. And this story definitely reminded me of that, Carlos. So it's funny you mentioned that. Um, and this is a, a home routers that are uh, being vaccinated by this benign virus. Is how this the headline reads in BBC. So well, someone has to be careful with, with that. It, it, as Larry mentioned, what happens when you break the device? So your good action now right. becomes a very dangerous one. It's like, hey, hey, look, he, he fell out of that roof. Let me help him. Oh, come on, buddy, here. L- l- let me sit you up. Ooh, something snapped. What was that? The guy <laughs> goes like, my back? Ooh. Um, yeah, one, one, one has to be very careful when one tries to help uh uh, and this kinds of stuff, it, it, it is like everything in, in life. Sometimes a good action can be worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, so in this good action, 
the real kicker of this story, as can be the case with a lot of this malware that ten pretends or does good, actually does good. Uh, this particular piece of code is called Wifotch. Wi-Fi. Why? Wi-Fotch. 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 Like Wi-Fi Watch, I guess, but Wi-Fotch. W i f a t c h. Wi-Fotch. Sure. Uh-huh. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I'm, I'm going with. I want, you know what? I'm going with Wifatch. I, I, I want to hear Carlos say it. Wifatch. <laughs> Wifatch. I want to hear Carlos say it. Uh, what's the name? Wi Wi-Fi. Wifitch. Uh, I like Carlos. You got a Wifitch. Wifitch. I like Wifitch better. Um, it says in the article <laughs> that Wi-Fi. It should also be pointed out that with Wi-Fi, Wifatch, with Wi-Fi. Now you guys messed me all up. <laughs> This whatever we're talking about, why fought, why fotch contains a number of general purpose backdoors that can be used by the author to carry out potentially malicious actions. And I find a lot of times malware not a lot, but in certain circumstances, why uh, malware will come out and say, Oh, we're doing good, we're gonna patch your computer, Larry. So go <laughs> yes. ahead, it's fine. But then give me a persistent backdoor into your computer. And you're like, well, this is great. My computer is more secure now. Hello, I am from the Microsoft. <laughs> well, h- how many times haven't we seen attackers go into a system? I was able to compromise the system. Cool. Now I got a full. Oh, uh, let me patch it so nobody else can get in. Takes my box away. Right. Yeah. And they'll patch it. They'll harden the box, but they still keep their foothold. They keep their back door there. Right now, as you mentioned, they're. Uh, it, it could lead to another compromise. We are assuming that he did it for the benefit of the user. Right. And since we have not talked with this person and this person hasn't come forward, we don't know really the motives of his actions, why did he did it. Now, I'm putting my lawyer dress on. Oh, but <laughs> damn, look at those legs. I want to say... Damn, look yeah, at those legs. You like that, huh? Oh. I want to say that this quite possibly could be, depending on the circumstances, you like how I preface that as an mm-hmm. escape clause, uh, this is a CFAA violation. CFAA violation. CFAA. CFA Computer for Fraud and Abuse, abuse Act. Act. Yep. Violation. Illegal trespass. I think it is. Yeah. That, that would be, be my take. Again, I'm just speaking just because I put my lawyer dress on for a couple minutes today. Earlier, while I was writing the stories, so uh, Forbes yesterday actually ran an article where they claimed to have interviewed the author of this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he uh, he does try and justify what he is doing, and it, it's worth taking a look at the actual article. It's called uh, "Meet the Mystery Vigilantes Who Created Malware to Secure a Thousand Routers." So he actually tries to go through and provide arguments that, although he recognizes what he is doing is illegal. The public good outweighs the harm he could be causing. Based uh, on his assessment. Basically, of course, based on his assessment, but he, he, he does state that he, un- he understands what he's doing is most likely illegal, but that the, the, ethical, the eth- ethical justification outweighs any harm being introduced because the, these routers are open to the internet and people could be doing harm versus what he's doing, which is trying to, to stop it. It's well, well a, lot, a lot of people can argue the same thing about a lot of other stuff. It's it's definitely uh, kind of a, an, an ethical quandary. And uh, oh, speaking of those, Edward Snowden fails at Twitter. Did you guys see <laughs> I this? mean, who doesn't? Edward Snowden got on Twitter. <laughs> he instantly gets like a million followers, and then turns on notifications for like everything. <laughs> and he had like forty-seven no, he, he for gigs of people. email and notifications. Ouch. Now, Let's be honest. Do we really think that's him? Oh, I, I don't, I, I don't know if it's been confirmed, Carlos, that it is him. It, it has a little blue check mark. They don't give those out. I mean, they do. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't give those out except for with Photoshop. Oh, the, the, my bad. the, the way, my I, bad. the way I see it is, if the U.S. wants to either kidnap or blow your ass away, are you going to go into Twitter? I don't know. I see it as a big offset fail in terms of uh, not, not offset fail, uh, an offset fail potential that yeah, where he's taunting somehow people. Somehow you're right. going to mess up, get caught. For example, all of those emails. How hard would it be to track to what address those yeah, emails? Yeah, I mean are it, going? it. It. Yeah. I, I, yeah, and this is a way to stay relevant. 
I don't I don't know if it's really him or not, but yeah, but he says, will, uh, but will you make it public? Hey, this is me. Hey, target me. He says, meanwhile, a thousand people at Fort Meade just opened Twitter. <laughs> but then he exchanges tweets with Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I think is friggin' hilarious. And he's like, hey, glad to see the long exile hasn't affected your sense of humor. Staying busy, asks Neil deGrasse Tyson. And Edward Snowden responds, surveillance never sleeps and secret projects and freedom of press are keeping busy. But I still find time for cat pictures. That kind of, me to me, reeks of, like, it's a fake count. Well, but really, what is he doing in Russia? Um, drinking vodka. I thought the meme if always I, says, what Russia does to you. So the, isn't the better question, what is Russia doing, doing Soviet to, Russia doing to him? I, exactly. I, if it were me, it would be pouring vodka down my throat, forcing me to eat caviar and have lots of Russian brides. But maybe that, is that just me? Maybe Larry. You, you got to find, find time for cat pictures. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. this is if you take any advice the, the, away from this show, always find time for cat pictures. Okay, I would say that uh, being in his position, that would mess up my head so badly. You know, being in Russia, they know that you know stuff about the U.S. You know that every time you go to the crapper, there's going to be a hidden camera somewhere. There's going to be a hidden mic somewhere. Everywhere you go, you're going to be watched, followed. It, it, it would mess with my head. I'm just thinking I could go for some caviar and vodka right now. <laughs> <laughs> and some cat pictures. <clears throat> yeah, uh, the whole thing is interesting. Yep. Get I'm, him on the show. Ask him. Uh, ooh, that would be interesting. Ooh. We could ask him about his cat pictures. I'm, I'm, I'm already in a couple of lists of the FBI. I don't want to be in another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment. You about got any other stories, Larry? I um, saw the OWA attacks one. The what not? The OWA attacks. It's, yeah, that's and this was kind of neat. Um, except for that's great. Um, awesome. We don't know how they got in. Exactly. It's great. There was an unsigned DLL. We found this, uh, you know, ability for OWA to to load unsigned DLLs. Uh, that can do fun stuff like do account harvesting. But how the fuck did they get it there? That's the part yeah, that we it, don't know. Yeah, well, when I see a technique, I'm more like, yeah, Einstein, so many people actually do the same. Uh, for uh, Let's say, for example, um, APT24, I think, from Chinese, what did it did? Yeah. It put a DLL file on the SQL manager folder and they found out that it could load that DLL before any other else. That was what they're using for persistence in, in that box. Uh, I remember when Metasploit started pumping out almost a module every week uh, on DLLs being loaded uh, by path errors, uh, even with web dev servers and everything. So it's it's an old known technique. Yep. But uh, you got to get there like, first. How they got in? How did they got in? That's right. That that, that that's that. It ta- yeah, piece of I, info that we want exactly, and and Carlos, that's sort of one of the things that you know that was sort of the password cracking thing last week was that you really maybe only need that one account, and if you can authenticate to that one account as a regular user against the OWA server on the inside, it might be game over. Yeah, and, 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 and many times when I talk with people, but um, for example, I'm I'm right now working on a class on post exploitation that I'm going to be giving pretty soon. And one of the things I'm trying to drill down into the students, you don't need system. You don't need root or you don't need to be a domain admin and you don't need to be running Mimikatz. Why? Because many times the users in the network, they need access to the data Mm -hmm. to get the job done and you Mm want to show risk to that data. You want to be that user. Mm -hmm. Many Mm -hmm. times you don't need to be anybody else. You don't need domain admin and own the entire domain. To show risk or to be able to get to what you want. Yep. Uh, so yeah, if, if you're able to get us one single user, and that user turns out to be the one with the uh, salaries of everybody with the uh, the social security numbers, boom, you're you're made. Yep. And and Carlos, you know as well as I do is that sometimes you can take that one user and you can turn it into many. Oh yeah. You feed it after midnight. Exactly. Or pour water <laughs> on it. Pour water. Water. Yeah. water. Either way. Either way. Feeding it turns it evil. Watering it. Watering it makes it multiply. Get it wet. Yeah. Right. 
Ah, yeah, I forgot about that. But one. the problem is, is that when if you feed it after midnight, when does it not become after midnight anymore? Because technically, every day is after midnight. Wow, that's deep, Larry. Because it's eight oh eight oh five. It's eight, it's eight oh five p.m. It's after midnight yesterday. That's that's deep, Larry. I'm impressed. Well, if if if, if you're a blue teamer, you go GMT, don't you? But it's still, it's no matter what time it is after GMT, it's still after midnight the previous day. <clears throat> yeah. It's always after midnight. Any other stories? I think we don't have time for any more stories. Or even, yeah. You're going to have to hold them until next week because I gotta hold it. we're fresh out of time. Don't okay. hold, hold the stories, not okay, anything yeah, else. Okay, because okay. yes. yeah, that's bad for your body. Kevin, right, Ke- right, Carl- Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, Carlos, Mike, thanks for joining via Skype. Larry, of course, thank you for being here in studio as <laughs> always. And for the 55-gallon tub of blue, that's hey, going to come you know, in handy. My gift to you. I hope you keep replenishing it because it might be empty by tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, that was expensive. <laughs> Larry, you, take you, us out. You, you get to buy the next refill. Over and out. <laughs>